Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to find the value of cosine 3 theta and sine 3 theta. Now definitely we could use trigonometric identities to evaluate these expressions but complex numbers are used for stuff like this all the time and it's actually really cool because we're going to be able to get these expressions at the same time from a single equation. That's what's really beautiful about this method. Okay, so let's talk about a couple different things. In the lecture videos, remember we mentioned something called polar form of a complex number. There's a standard form and then there's Euler's formula. So those are really nice things if you are not familiar with complex numbers or if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out the lecture videos. So now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with cosine 3 theta and sine 3 theta. But we need to put those together in a meaningful form. So that's where the polar form comes in. So let's go ahead and remember what that is. The polar form is basically if you have a complex number like a plus bi, it can basically be written as the absolute value, and by the way, I'm going to call that z, absolute value of z multiplied by cosine theta plus i sine theta where absolute value of z is just called the modulus, or just absolute value, and theta is called the argument of z, or just arg is in short. Now, this is the polar form, and of course, we can write it in a more compact form, which I'll show you. Let's go ahead and call this r, and using Euler's formula, which says cosine theta plus i sine theta, and you can prove this with series, equals e to the power i theta. What a beautiful identity that puts together so many interesting things. And thanks to Euler, we have this identity. And if you replace theta with pi, pi over 2, and you're going to get a lot of interesting identities. Okay, if you multiply both sides by r, you're going to get our number in polar form. But let's go ahead and uh, keep it at this for right now, because that's the identity we're going to use. Okay, great. Now, how do we go from cosine theta plus i sine theta to cosine 3 theta and sine 3 theta? That's where Euler's formula comes in. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and start with cosine of 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. Awesome. Because we have this Euler's formula, we can replace theta with 3 theta easily, right, in the exponent. So that's going to give us e to the power i times 3 theta. Beautiful, right? You just replace theta with something else, you get another identity. Now, here's the critical part. Using rules of exponents, and since 3 is a real number, this can be done easily, we can write this as e to the i theta to the power 3. Why? Because this 3 here is basically, this 3 there, is basically uh, going to be multiplied by the other exponent, right? Make sense? So, what do we get from here? We do get a beautiful identity because e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta, right? In polar form. So now here's what we get. Cosine of 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta theta to the third power. Beautiful. And I think this is called the Moivers formula, right? Something like that. I can never say the French pronunciation, but that's what it is. So since our goal is to find cosine 3 theta and sine 3 theta, we're going to keep that on the left. But first, let's go ahead and focus on what's on the right. So I'm going to take that and simplify it as much as possible. So let's go ahead and cube this. In order to cube this, I want to use my identity. It's not mine, but you know, it's, this is the one that I often use. You'll probably remember uh, from solving uh, cubic equations, the cubic formula uh, on my other channel, Cyber Math. Anyways, so this is the this is my version: a cube plus b cube plus three ab multiplied by a plus b. So let's go ahead and use it to cube this expression. I'm supposed to do the following. Let's go ahead and write it down here. I think we're going to need some room. So let's go ahead and put it here. A cubed cosine cubed theta plus B cubed. How do you cube this? I cubed sine cubed. 
And remember, i cubed is equal to negative i, so that's just going to be negative, that's going to be a minus sign, negative i sine cubed, right? Great. So I got the first part, and now 3ab is just going to be multiply these two things, 3i cosine times sine. And then this is going to be multiplied by a plus b again, and that is cosine theta plus i sine theta. Make sense? So I used my identity to cube cosine theta plus i sine theta, which can be written as e to the i theta uh, using Euler's formula. And now we're going to go ahead and simplify it. After we simplify this expression, we're going to set it equal to this. And then from there, we're going to find something. Actually, two things. All right, let's go ahead and proceed. First of all, I can go ahead and use distributive property here, right, can't I? I don't know why those thetas come out super weird sometimes. But anyways, let's go ahead and multiply these two things first. When I multiply them, I'm getting 3i cosine squared theta sine theta, right? Great. What is next? I'm going to multiply these two now. And when I do, 3i squared gives me negative 3. And then cosine sine times sine is going to give me cosine times sine squared. Okay? There's no i because i squared disappeared, like it became negative 1. Great. So how do we simplify this? Let's put the real parts together. We're going to get cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine theta sine squared theta. I'm putting the real parts together. This is, the, this is the real part. And then the imaginary part is this and this. So that's going to be 3 cosine squared theta sine theta minus sine cubed theta. And of course, that's going to be multiplied by i, right? We're going to multiply that by i. And this is supposed to equal what? Cosine 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. So in other words, you got the answer. This is cosine 3 theta, and this is sine 3 theta. Great, right? OK, and obviously, you can use this method to find uh, cosine 4 theta, 5 theta, 7 theta, whatever you want. Just use the binomial theorem to find any of those expressions that you want. OK, so let's see how. Uh, we can proceed from here, like how can we simplify this expression, right? So we have cosine 3 theta equals cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine times sine squared from here. But I can replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared theta. And this gives us cosine 3 theta equals cosine cubed. And I'll get 4 cosine cubed from here. I mean 3 cosine cubed. And then when you add them, you're going to get 4 cosine cube theta minus 3 cosine theta. So that's going to be the value of cosine 3 theta in terms of cosine theta only. And the value of sine 3 theta is going to be the following. We get 3 cosine squared. And actually, let me replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared because I want everything in terms of sine squared here because it's sine 3 theta times sine theta minus sine cubed theta. Let me go ahead and finish this, uh, simplify this, and I'm going to clean up and put those two together. And sine 3 theta from here is just going to be 3 sine theta minus 3 sine cubed, another sine cubed, so minus 4 sine cubed theta. And this is sine of, this is sine of 3 theta. Let's go ahead and erase this, and then let's put this uh, over here. Let's move that a little bit up here. And then that's going to be sine 3 theta. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.